Amen. Um, I need us first of all to go to the book of Ezekiel. Chapter uh, 3. There was a bomb on New Year's Eve uh, in Egypt, in a Christian a Coptic church in Egypt. There was a bomb that went off and the church was set on fire. And 21 people were killed in the bomb. They were celebrating uh, New Year's, bringing in New Year's, praising the Lord. And uh, uh, someone set a bomb off in the church in Egypt, killing 21 people. Um, we need to understand that the privilege of being a Christian is not uh, as free all, all around the world as it is here. Amen. There are some people all around the world that are, you know, uh, fighting for the opportunity to praise God, to yeah. give Him glory, yeah. to come to church, to have a Bible. You know, there are some countries that you can really get uh, uh, killed for, for having a Bible. Amen. And so you have to understand that the privilege that we have in the United States that we can wake up on a Sunday morning and go to church and hear the Word of God um, is a great privilege. Yes. And for us to take that privilege and, and not really uh, uh, use it to, the, to its max is it, really a sin. Amen. Because, you know, like I, I was watching one time, there was these kids in Africa, and they were excelling in school, like, like their math and everything, that's all they did was just, they, they were really just loving going to school. And then when they showed the school, it was horrible. It was like dirt floors and, you know, they had to share a desk. Some kids had to stand while the other kids did yeah. homework. Yeah. And then I come to the United States and, you know, and you get someone like the, our kids and they're like, you know, I don't want to go to school. I hate you to do porn. And so, you know, sometimes I'm just saying you can have privilege and not really understand what you have. Praise God. Amen. So if you, if, are you in Ezekiel chapter uh, 3, first of all, we're going to be in chapter 3. Um, in chapter 3, verse 16, I read some of this on Wednesday night, but God has given me a different twist on the scripture. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I don't like when God has me talking about sin because that means it's going on. I'd much rather he have me talk about who he is. And because I love to talk about who Jesus is and what he's done. But when he has me talk about sin, um, that means we got problems. Yeah. And so today, we want to make sure that we understand sin, mercy and grace, and fooling yourself. Okay? Because, I mean, how awesome is God? How awesome is God that, that God Almighty would say, I want to become a man so that I can die on the cross for their sins so they don't have to pay for it. How awesome is that to do that and to know what you're going to go through? And how horrible is it for someone to say, I accept that sacrifice, but I'm not going to stop sinning and doing the same things that cause you to be on the cross. It's just not right. We're in Ezekiel, right? Right. <clears throat> I'm going to start reading. At the end of seven days, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. So hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. When I say to a man, you will surely die, and you do not warn him or speak out to dissuade him, from, from his evil, from his evil ways in order to save his life, that wicked man will die for his sins, and I will hold you accountable for his blood. But if you do warn the wicked man, and he does not turn from his wickedness or from his evil ways, he will die for his own sin, but you will be saved. Uh, but you will have saved yourselves. Again, when a righteous man, when a righteous man turns 
uh, from his righteousness and does evil. And I put a stumbling block before him, he will die. Since you did not warn him, he will die for his sins. Okay. I'm going to finish reading this, but what we're reading about here is uh, someone being commissioned by God to tell people the truth. Meaning, if I see that you're in sin, to tell you you're in sin, in order to do what? Save, Save your life. Okay? Remember, God created hell. He knows where you're going once you get caught up in sin. Okay? Right. Some of us are afraid to run from sin, but you need to run from sin. Amen. Sin is a murderer. If someone pulled a gun out, you would run. Someone pull a sin out, and you embrace it and want to wonder what it is and get closer to it. Right. It's crazy. Sin is a murderer. You need to get out of its way, stay out of its way, avoid it at all costs. Amen. So here we have, it says here, now look. When a righteous man turns from his righteousness and does evil, God says, I will put a stumbling block and he will die. But understand, this man is righteous and now he's deciding that he's going to turn away from righteousness and he's going to begin to do evil. Okay? Amen. Then it says, the righteous things he did uh, will not be remembered. And I will hold you accountable for his blood. Now understand that. Once the righteous man is saying, okay, I came forward, I'm confessing that Jesus Christ is Lord, I want to do right, I want to live right, and they say, wow, brother, so-and-so is doing so great in the church. Let's promote him to this. And this brother's like, you know, man, I'm reading my Bible, and I'm growing in Christ, and, and we're just so proud of him. And then, four months later, he decides, you know, I met somebody, I, I, um, uh, um, living with her, um, she got me mad, I started back cursing, and now I'm telling the brother, hey, look, you need to come out of that sin, right? Right. But you know that previous seven months that he was very good in Christ, and now the way that he's living now, God says he can't remember that seven months mm -hmm. anymore. Right. You don't get credit. We're not on a righteousness credit program, you understand? <laughs> When Christ comes, you are what you are when he comes. You right, understand? Right, right. You are what you are. Okay? You can't die in sin and say, the, even the scripture says in, in, in Hebrew says, if you die that way, all you can look for is a, um, it is a, uh, it's like an unsure judgment. You're not sure whether you're going to enter the kingdom or not. Who wants to die like that? Don't you want to die sure knowing yes. that you're living for Christ? Yes. Knowing that you're living a righteous life before God? Yes. That's how you want to live your life. You don't want to live in a balance. Right. And God is telling people, look, there is one way to get into the kingdom and there is a way to fool yourselves. Amen. This needs to be embraced. Why should this be embraced? Because this is the reward for all of us for eternity. You are meant to live for eternity. Yes. And this is the reward, is that you're going to live in eternity with God, and you're going to reign with Him forever. Yes. And you have a mansion, and you have eternal life abundantly. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is worth fighting for. Amen. Why is it so hard to get Christians to realize that you need to get out of the way of sin, because your reward is on the line, and death is on the line. Right. So this is what the scripture said. I'm going to finish reading it. It says, I will hold him accountable for, uh, uh, for his blood. But if you do warn him, uh, the man, uh, and, uh, the man do not sin, and he does not sin, he will surely live because you have warned him, um, and, and you will have saved yourself. So in that manner, God is saying, warn a person. You have a friend that's sinning, please don't tell him. But don't worry, God's grace is, is wonderful. You know, he'll see you through it. 